Hi again then guys and welcome to another car review of course from Test Drive Unlimited 2 and many of you who like me played this game even from day one will have very fond memories of this car. It's the kind of vehicle where even if you're not a fan of its looks, which I can understand, it's just such a beneficial vehicle to own. It's easily one of the best cars in the game. I would argue it's the best off-roader in the game all round because yes, the buggy is even quicker. The acceleration is better in particular, top speed isn't. The handling is very good on the buggy and it has the highest B class of any vehicle in the game, but you have to unlock it, you can't buy it. If I recall correctly, you can't really race it that much. So this one has the attainability, albeit a six figure price, and of course you can race and you can certainly win with it. Now, the curious thing about this car is that there are technically two versions of the Spyker SSUV project, a super SUV, long before Lamborghini brought out the Urus. The original had a W12 engine, a six litre, and it was called the D12, picking to Paris. This is technically the second generation of that concept, with a Cadillac V8 engine instead called the D8, picking to Paris. This was closer to production, the engine would have been much easier to manufacture, much more easy to get parts for, and a lot cheaper to develop as well than that W12. So it was a fairly obvious choice to go for. It's got the grunt, it's got a great spec, tons of power and torque, and it's a, I believe, supercharged engine, if I recall correctly. And in a two-ton SUV, as this one is, 4,400 pounds, the performance is fantastic. There's no other way of saying it. It is a super sport car level machine. The top speed is 174 miles an hour, and the 0 to 60 time is 4.8 seconds. In real life, I believe the car was actually even quicker than that, according to Spiker. The top speed of up around 185, I believe, was banded about as far as what they were aiming for. So either way, it's one of the quickest cars out there on the street, SUV or otherwise. And that's the beautiful thing about this car. The visuals might not be beautiful to everyone. To me, I actually love the way it looks, but what is beautiful is what this thing can do. Because no vehicle that is this big and almost hippo-esque in its appearance, weighing two tons with all-wheel drive, it just doesn't have any right to be hitting 0-60 in the time of an Audi RS4 with the top speed of a Corvette. That is ridiculous, and yet that's what it can do. And if it seems like I like this car quite a bit, I do. In fact, it's one of my top 10 favorite cars, period. Real life or games. It's my second favorite concept car of all time behind the Cadillac 16, and I adore this car. I love the way it looks, I think it has a stunning interior, and to me, an SUV, for all of the hate that they get, trucks get even more, but SUVs get quite a lot, I love the fact that they have, when well designed, great appearances, they're comfortable, spacious, practical, unlike a wagon, they can take on all circumstances, on-road, off-road, inclement weather, it doesn't matter, but at the same time, the performance of an SUV and what it can do has come along so fast in recent years, thanks to companies like Bentley, Aston Martin, of course Porsche, pioneering it with the KN in the earlier 2000s, then Volkswagen of course with my car, the V10. It's proven time and time again that SUVs can be incredible performance machines. This is the absolute pinnacle of that idea. And even though, in my opinion, Spyker does not get the recognition that they deserve as making fantastic vehicles, they're easily overshadowed in terms of pure performance by companies like Pagani and Koenigsegg, but when they turn their hand to making something that could potentially lead a category, such as this being the ultimate SUV, well, they didn't mess around. It really would have been the ultimate SUV. Performance notwithstanding, just the rest of the build quality and exclusivity and the interior, it would have been a true exotic SUV. Then when you factor in that performance, it would have been untouchable. Back in, I believe it was 2006, when the W12 version was first shown, then this one of course later on, they could release this car in 2021, and it would still seem like it was futuristic, and it would still be one of the quickest around. I think it's almost unfortunate that Spyker first developed it when they did, because I don't think the market was ready. I think the market now is more ready than it has ever been for a vehicle like this, and Spyker, as far as I know, isn't doing all that well financially. So it's a real shame, in my opinion, that Spyker maybe just didn't conserve a little bit of the funds and, and try this project a little bit later on. Of course, hindsight is 2020, but still, 
This is the time for an SUV like this, and it arrived too early. People weren't ready for it, it was too extreme, it was a type of vehicle which wasn't leading the market yet, certainly not as it is now, and I think that really is unfortunate. However, I think it's fantastic that you have it in a game like this, because it's a totally unexpected car, it's certainly one of the best unicorns of this game. You very rarely see a car like this pop up in any game, let alone Test Drive Unlimited. And to me, a vehicle like this really harkens back to my favorite things about the first game, such as seeing vehicles like the Cadillac 16, the Adonis, the Holden Effigy. You just don't expect those cars to show up in a game like that. This showing up in TDU2, I believe, is one of the most gifted choices, one of the best vehicles they could have added to the game, because it suits the game so well. And another fascinating thing about the D8 is that this could easily be a poser's SUV. And what I mean by that is what I would call a soft roader, the kind of SUV where the most off-roading they will ever do is mounting the curb. They're just a status symbol. A Range Rover, for instance, or a Hummer comes to mind. Can they go off-road? Sure. Are most of the owners going to use it for that? Absolutely not. Then, however, you get something like a Touareg. Tons of people use them off-road, and it's a fantastic off-roader. And, of course, that mighty V10 in real life makes it a perfect off-road workhorse, especially in conjunction with the surprisingly modest wheelbase. It's not an overly long car. Likewise, this one, it doesn't arguably need to be any good off-road at all. Tons of people would have still bought it. This could easily be the kind of SUV that you would only ever see in Monaco. And nobody would fault it for that, because that's the kind of buyer that you'd expect on a $265,000 SUV. At least that's the price in the game. In the game, though, it's so much more than that. It's a brilliant off-roader, one of the best in the game, and one of the reasons why is the shape. It doesn't have this big, boxy, cumbersome, Range Rover-esque shape to it, it's actually got a, a very sloping up front under tray, which is fantastic for clearing deep ravines. It's got a very sloping down back end, which improves the aerodynamics, helps the top speed. It really is this idea of, in effect, a super crossover, if anything, rather than a super SUV, because it doesn't have that typical back end of an SUV. It's almost like a sports car, which is then extended into a limo, kind of Aston Martin Rapide style, and then jacked up to give it crazy high suspension. Again, something which companies are now doing, Mercedes, various others too, this idea of a, a jacked up crossover with the characteristics of a sports car, but the off-road clearance of an SUV. Again, this car did that way before anyone else was, and it doesn't get the credit for pioneering that, really. To me, it's a fantastic car. I absolutely love it in real life, certainly in the game as well. And the brilliant thing about it is, unlike the majority of the cars that I love, which tend to be just the oddball ones that I love because I do, rather than because of their performance, this is one of those times where I love the car, and it's the best choice to go for. This is the ultimate SUV in the game. As cliched as it sounds, it really is the Veyron of SUVs as far as this game goes. It's way better than it has any right to be, and off-road, it really does come into its element. You can kind of see at the end of this video, the handling is just planted, the weight is high enough to stop it from fishtailing around all over the place, but not so high that it's ridiculous. For instance, it weighs 600 kilos less than a Touareg, that's a significant advantage with so much power, so much torque, 550 pound feet in fact, it's formidable. It's a formidable opponent, a fantastic B category vehicle, B3 in particular. So yeah, definitely give it a look. It is expensive, so it might take you a little bit longer if you're starting a new game to pick one up, but it's such a good car to go for. And it's one of the SUVs where once you've got it, not much else can really challenge you. Overall though, that's it for my thoughts on this car. It's actually one of those vehicles which I would absolutely die to get the chance to drive the real concept version of. That would be such an awesome experience, but it's probably something that will never happen, just like the Cadillac 16. Overall though, that's it for my thoughts, and of course tell me yours down below. Did you love the car? Did you maybe not use it? Are you not a fan of the looks? That's a common opinion about the car. And until next time, I'll see you then, but for now, as always, thanks for watching.